What's going on guys, it's Chris here, back with another painting video. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna show you how I paint this portrait of Tyler Creator, uh, one of my favorite rappers. But um, yeah, so I've primed the canvas with Gesso Primer and just added a tiny bit of red to make it pink, to save painting it again. And um, yeah, so I printed out my reference photo and I usually use a stiff sort of brush to do my underpainting. Um, you can do whatever you want and like draw it with a pencil or use a grid method. But I just, I don't know, I prefer, I prefer doing it this way now. Uh, just painting it on there. And I feel like it makes you sort of better, um, a better painter. But yeah, I've got my acrylic paint, uh, water and a bit of a paper towel. And yeah, gonna mix a little sort of uh, color for my underdrawing. Um, I don't really, I don't really plan sort of what colors I'm gonna use. I just sort of wing it, and I was just feeling a sort of red color uh, for the drawing. I'm just gonna add like a little bit of blue just to make it a bit darker. So I've got my uh, reference photo printed off. Um, I, I used to just paint with it on my phone, but I found it for some reason uh, easier to do it like this. We can use an iPad. I usually print it out about A5 size, so it's smaller than the canvas, but um, whatever suits you really. It's just so you can sort of hold it in front of you and compare it. And yeah, so I'll start off with sort of just the basic outline of the head. And I do find it helpful to sort of look at the negative space, like the space outside uh, the face in the picture, and so to sort of guide you as an outline. And then to sort sort of start uh, mapping out the features, with like the center of the face, use like the hairline, the eyebrows, the eyes, the nose and the mouth. Sort of just roughly where they are, marking it out with a line. And I find this is just easier to help you start uh, mapping out the features. And again, we're not going too much into detail. And um, yeah, then I just start with like a dark color, just to like get some of the shadows in. I mainly go with the features. And um, just just so when you do start the painting, you don't paint over the drawing and you can't see it anymore. To find it easier. And uh, yeah, you don't have to always start with the darks, but I like to just get the features in first, just a little bit, and then you can just do what you want really. Um, and yeah, like I said, I don't really plan out how exactly the painting's gonna look. I have a rough idea, but. I was just really feeling like a blue background for some reason. So just wanted to block all that in. And then I like doing this thing where I get my paintbrush loaded with paint. I just dip it in water, like loads of water, and just make it drip down the canvas. Um, yeah, I just feel like that makes it look more exciting. And that's the thing, like I used to just paint exactly from the reference photo with the same colours, make it look exactly the same. But for one, they're sort of just copying it. And two, I just think it looks boring. And it's sort of just boring to do anyway. So I find just using your own sort of colour scheme or whatever is more exciting. And yeah, now I'm just booking in like the main shapes. And, and I said you don't always have to start with the darks, but this photo I'm using mainly just has darks in it. So I've sort of got no choice. But yeah, so I'm using a big brush, just blocking in the main shapes and not focusing on any detail. And then what I'll do is alternate slowly to smaller brushes as I go and then do the smaller shapes. And just, yeah, just go down to like 
the, the lighter colours as I go until I've done a layer and then to start refining it. But here I'm using a slightly smaller brush now. And just sort of, yeah, having fun with it, just seeing how I go. I like using a lot of paint as well, like loading my brush up. Um, I don't really have to use mediums. Sometimes you do, and you can get an acrylic flow medium if your paint's not flowing well. But I don't really need to use this. But yeah, like now I'm just getting down to like the slightly smaller brushes and just doing the little details. And like I said, it doesn't always look bang on when you first start. And you end up having to refine it. So what I do is take a step back and compare my reference photo to the painting. And sort of look at it closely and see what little things I need to change uh, to make it look better. Make it look like the photo. And when I did this, I've noticed that the nose is a bit off and the eyes are too small. And the ears are too big and... The right side of the face is too like round and fat. And so, yeah, the slightest little changes sort of change everything. So I just started going back and refining these. And that's the thing I like about acrylic. Because I do use oil, but if you notice with oil, you've got to like be proper, like careful. Like you've got to start with darks first, really. And then if you paint, because if you paint lights first and then paint over with dark, you'll get all, it's like going, mixing in with the colour underneath and stuff. But with acrylics, you could just do what you want and just let it dry. If worse comes to worse, you just let it dry and paint over it, which is one of the freedoms of it. Yeah, you can see me now sort of like cutting into the face and painting, cutting it, sort of like sculpting it where I think it was too wide. And just finishing off some of the details. And with me, I'm never like usually happy with a painting until it looks like sort of exciting. So I started like destroying it a bit, <laughs> which I think is one of the fun parts of uh, my painting process. I find just making it look a bit crazy. And now I do this thing sometimes where I just get masking tape. Well, a lot of people do it, but you lay masking tape and then you paint over it and then you take it off and sort of make some like sort of stripey pattern or whatever you want to do but using this weird like spongy like roller thing I don't even remember where I got that from but it's useful sometimes if you don't really want a paintbrush uh, mark it just gives it a different like texture But yeah, I just really thought I needed some red in the picture. So, I don't want to go too mad, but... Yeah, it's quite satisfying when you take the, mar the actual masking tape off as well. But I just think it gives it quite a cool effect. And then, basically, you've got to sort of find the, the fine line between knowing when your painting's finished and overworking it and sometimes I cross this line and sometimes I don't do enough and I think I should have done a bit more to finish it and I end up going back but um, you find it eventually sort of it's just one of those things you just it comes with like practice but yeah I was quite happy with this piece to be fair I mean, I might have rusted it 
rust it a little bit to make the video not two hours, but it is what it is. And yeah, this is another one of them sort of like things I do. Well, I don't always do it, but instead of using a palette knife, you can just use a card or I find using the end of one of these tubes and just dipping it in paint makes quite a cool little effect. And then obviously you've got to like sign the painting as well. I use a Pos Posca pen to find that easier. And yeah, that is pretty much it. But, um, yeah, I think that's it. So uh, cheers for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.